So I want to welcome everyone to the California Academy of Sciences. My name is Sonia, I'll be your presenter for today. And this program is called Connect with a Scientist. But uh, how many of you out there are scientists? Okay, everyone should be raising their hands. How many of you like to look at things? Maybe have questions about things? Like to wonder every once in a while and sometimes even may find out the answers to your own questions. Okay, so you are all scientists, but I would like to introduce you to some professional scientists and some ones that maybe have gone to a little bit of schooling uh, to become the scientists that they are today. Uh, please give a nice warm welcome to the Stanford Brown iGEM team. Give them a nice round of applause. And there are probably a couple more of you than that. Um, so can you introduce yourselves very quickly? Yeah, um, my name is Ravali. I'm Ryan Kent. I'm Evie Pless. Well, very nice to meet you. And um, how many of you are kind of wondering, well, what, what is iGEM? A little bit, maybe? Okay, I, I'm actually wondering that myself. You guys are part of a team um, that, well, you tell me. Yeah, so iGEM, it stands for the International Genetically Engineered Machines Competition. Um, and basically what we are, we are a group of undergrads um, from Stanford and Brown Universities because our advisor, uh, Dr. Lynn Rothschild, works at both of those schools. So she okay. puts the team together by recruiting half the students from Stanford, half the students from Brown. Um, that's our team right up there in the corner right after we presented um, at regionals this past weekend. And what it is, is it's a group of students who come together and do a series of biology projects focused in synthetic biology. Um, and at the end of the summer, we take our projects and we go to a regional competition. So we went to the no. North America regionals in Toronto last week. Cool. Um, you present there and then the top 15 teams get a chance to advance. So we are going on to Worlds and we're headed to um, MIT in Boston uh, the first weekend of November. Very impressive. How many of you have been part of a, a science fair? Or a science competition? Anyone done a science project before? Okay, so this is kind of like the version that you do when you get a little bit older, right? Absolutely. Wow, okay. Now, uh, I really think that this illustration sums up a lot of your partnerships and what you do. Does anyone notice some things about this, uh, this image on the side? What do you notice about those balloons and the balloon strings? Can anyone uh, identify what's in those balloon strings? What is that? Is it, what were you gonna say? DNA. Very impressive, yeah. So um, can you explain to us what, what goes in? Actually, what, anything else that you notice? What other things do you notice about this? What are we looking at? Yeah. The Sorry, the Stanford the sign. Uh-huh. Do you notice any other logos on there? Yeah. What was that? A little bit louder. <laughs> oh, it's Stanford, Brown, NASA, right? <laughs> um, and so can you tell us, why, why did you pick this amazing picture? Yeah, so this was drawn by one of our team members, Emily Toomey, is a Brown student, and um, she's also an artist and loves to draw and paint in her free time. Um, so she kind of put this together to sum up our projects this year. We actually have this dinosaur image on our shirts as well for this year um, as part of our like matching team gear that we wear during presentations. Um, basically, kind of to sum it up, as you mentioned, it's got a lot of our partnerships on it. Um, there's NASA on the space helmet because we do all of our research at NASA Ames um, out in Mountain View um, because that is where our advisor works and where her lab is located. Okay. Um, the logos, you know, we mentioned Stanford and Brown in the middle. That's the official iGEM logo for the mm -hmm. iGEM organization. We have a dinosaur because one of our projects, we did four projects this year, and one is a project called de-extinction. Um, and has to do with um, reconstructing ancestral proteins and things like that. But oh. we decided to go a little further and play it up and go all the way. Okay. You know, it's more fun to think about de-extincting a dinosaur than de-extincting proteins. So hopefully one day we'll be able to do something like that. Gotcha. Um, and the DNA balloon strings is because what we do is basically, you know, the whole idea of a genetically engineered machine is manipulating the DNA of living organisms to kind of get them to do what we want and create something that isn't necessarily natural. So using the organism as a machine wow. and using the DNA um, as kind of our toolkit to play around with it. Very and cool. Okay, out there in the crowd, how do you think we could create um, fake life? Not fake life, but... 
I don't know. Have you ever heard of anything like that? Creating a cell? Creating? Any examples you can think of? That's kind of a weird question. Okay. Forget the question. Could you tell us a little bit, what is synthetic biology? Absolutely. So, um, like I mentioned, the basic idea is kind of reprogramming life to get it to do what you want. So, a really good example, um, for those of you who are scientists, you know, think of GFP or green fluorescence protein. So, basically the idea is that you could take, you know, we, we've seen like fireflies or we've seen jellyfish and how they kind mm. of glow. You know, you can see them here in the academy if you haven't. They're downstairs, they're really cool. Um, yeah. So, you know, jellyfish kind of glow and you can take basically the gene for that glowing and put it into other cells and make them glow when they don't normally glow. Um, oh. So that's basically kind of the idea of what we're doing. You can see kind of the image over there. We're taking regular, you know, biology, things that we've learned in classrooms and many of us have a background in biology and it's what we study in college. Um, and we're taking it and, you know, kind of using it to our advantage, trying to see how we can change what cells and what animals and different organisms already do um, and to create new things. So like making a red strawberry into a blue strawberry. Absolutely. Is that like is that. a perfect example of synthetic okay. biology. Putting a tomato and giving it some fish genes so that it's... Uh, can not freeze in the cold. Absolutely. Okay. So why, uh, why would something like creating cells or manipulating cells, what would that have to do with outer space and NASA? I'll take on that question. Um, so one of the biggest issues that NASA has with launching things into space is called up mass cost. And that is basically how much it costs to launch things into space. So can you guys help me out here? How much do you think it costs to launch one pound into space? Ten thousand dollars for one pound? That's exactly right. Oh, <laughs> did you plant him in the audience? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, all right. So, yeah. <laughs> so if you guys like take your shoe off, like that's close to a pound, and it costs ten thousand dollars to put that up in space. So if you can imagine going on long-term trips to Mars or the Moon, you need years worth of supplies like food and you know building materials that you need to bring up. Um, and with that cost, it doesn't really make sense to bring all of it with you. It's like, I don't know, going on a camping trip and bringing, if you're going camping for months, you bring all the food. No, you wish, you bring a fishing pole and you go fishing there, mm -hmm. right? So synthetic biology, how it's going to be used is that you can bring up a small vial of cells. So like this looks like a crazy energy drink is actually just liquid full of cyanobacteria. So you oh. bring up a little tube of that. Uh -huh. And once you get to Mars or where you're going, then you can grow it up onto a larger scale. So it basically reduces the cost of, of space travel. Um, so you're yeah. thinking like sandwiches made out of bacteria. Exactly, right. You don't bring the sandwich, you bring up a little bacteria and then you grow the sandwiches okay. when you get there. Very cool. Huh. Yeah. So um, what have you been working on as far as this project goes? I know this isn't what you've currently been working on. This is sort of a, a thing of the past. So this is a, a super cell. Tell yeah. us about the super power cell. So this is actually what I worked on. I was on the team two years ago and now I'm a mentor for these guys here. So this is... So what we talked about with making strawberries blue and all the other applications of synthetic biology is that they, they need fuel themselves. They need to grow these, these bacteria that we're bringing up. Um, so what we've designed is this, it's called power cell. It's a cell that makes sugar for other cells. So it's a cyanobacteria that can photosynthesize like plants on earth. Um, it takes light and makes sugar. And now these cells can secrete that sugar so other cells and other things can live off of that. Wow, so uh, you're, bring, you're bringing tiny little sugar factories exactly, exactly. into space. Yep, you got How it. cool would that be? How many of you like sugar? I thought so. Yes, so these are your friends. Yes, Yes. talk to me later for sugar. <laughs> but not only sugar in its form, but something that could feed other exactly. stuff. Yep, you, um, you can build stuff out of this. Very cool, okay. So, uh, so now we've got this power cell. Yep. What's the next step after that? The next step is to test it in space, and we're excited that we are going to have an opportunity to do that in 2016 on a satellite mission, a German satellite mission called Eucropus. And the, the purpose of Eucropus is to uh, learn more about growing food in space, but they have some room for secondary payloads. And so uh, we have a collaboration between NASA and the German satellite uh, uh, agency and they're gonna take up a few projects from NASA, including the power cell that Ryan just talked about. 
And so we're going to be back on Earth, and our power cell is going to be up in space, rotating at different frequencies, and it's going to simulate the gravity of the moon, of Mars, and microgravity. And we're going to be down here. Is our cell secreting sucrose? Uh, can anyone think of a way we might tell like, whether the cell is secreting sucrose down here? Uh, how could you tell if, the, if it's actually making sugar, our little sugar factories? Yeah. You could taste you it. Taste could you it? taste it from far away? Yeah, the problem is, so if we, <laughs> depending on how many pounds you are, you are many thousands of dollars to send to space. <laughs> so we want to send something smaller, but we want that small thing to taste the sucrose for oh, us. Oh, okay. So we're going to send a bacteria that's going to taste the sucrose for us. And if it tastes sucrose, it's going to change colors. And uh, so we have engineered that into a really hardy bacteria called Bacillus subtilis. And uh, Bacillus subtilis has been flown in space before. It's been flown in space for six years, and some of the spores were still viable when they came home. So we think that this is going to work out, and, um, and the cells, are when they see that sucrose, they're going to change color, and we're going to take an image uh, with a spectrophotometer, and it's going to send back down to Earth, and that's how we'll know whether the power cell that okay. Ryan described is actually working. Okay, so what I'm imagining is some Petri dishes or something, yeah, some little, little ones, micro, round discs, okay. And then over time, as the super duper cell, our sugar factory, is creating sugar, then the bacteria eat it, they change color. What colors are they changing, by the way? Uh, right now we're working with a red fluorescent protein and a red chromoprotein, so right now we're going with red. So Part. does it go red to red? Uh, oh, those, sorry, those were two different markers that we're working with oh, right okay, now. Okay. Um, but it could be another color in the future if we, oh. we change our mind. Okay, right so now it's going to be red. Changes to red from not much at all? Uh, yeah, I, I would say it's... Color. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mine's so you have these color-changing discs, and then yeah. sort of kind of like a camera, kind of like a like yeah. sort of light sensor uh -huh, sees absolutely. the change in the color? Yes. Okay, is this making sense to everyone? Awesome. That sounds really cool. Okay, and then you're sending it to space. Yeah, and then uh, that'll be in 2016. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so this is pretty incredible. Um, are there other things that you have to do in order to, to test this out before that? I mean, to, you know, 2016 is pretty far away. We want to make sure it works. Yeah, absolutely. What other steps are you all going through? Yeah, so there are going to be a lot of tests in lab to make sure that these two things work together, the power cell and the, the sucrose detector. Um, and we also want to test that at a high altitude, but not quite in space. So we're hoping for a helium balloon test flight. Um, and so we'll, that's on the horizon, and that'll be a really a good, a really good preliminary test uh, before we uh, finish our tests in lab and, and go on to the satellite mission. Very cool. Okay, does this bring up any questions out there? Questions so far? Are you, are any of you um, hoping to one day go to space to use some of this technology? Maybe Ryan? Yeah, I'd love to go to space. It'd be <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, what kind of things do you think uh, could be made from from the power cells, sugar, um, once you figure out whether it actually works in zero gravity or low gravity? Yeah, so some things that the power cell could fuel. Um, one other thing we work on in the lab is, um, so you, there's the, the tanks with the fish and everything across the other way in the, at the Cal Academy. The, on the rocks, there's sometimes um, mussels growing there. And they secrete, the way that they stick on the rocks is they have a, like a adhesive protein. So you can add that adhesive protein some, to some bacteria. You bring that up to the moon, and when, you grow, when that bacteria grows, they create that adhesive. So basically, you have a sticky substance that you could put with the, the Martian regolith, which is the dust, and make concrete, basically. So you can bring wow. little bacteria with muscle proteins in there to, to make concrete or wow. so there's, it's basically anything that biology on earth can do you can put that in a bacteria and bring it up wherever so what yeah. other ideas out there or what would you like for these bacteria to create yeah Ah, yeah. what so other elements does your bacteria require yeah, like question. plants on earth so the, um the power cell is a cyanobacterium, so it's a photosynthesizing um, organism, which means it only really needs carbon dioxide, which we breathe out and is really abundant on Mars, um, and sunlight. So the light and the carbon dioxide, it can fix those together and make sugar. Um, and so then 
The power cell also secretes nitrogen products, which is another thing that we need. So the cells that we talked about that turn red, what they need is a sugar source and a nitrogen source, and that'll both be produced by the power cell. Wow. So yeah, it's self-sustaining. So and all that power cell really needs is that carbon dioxide. And the light. And yep. the light. And a couple of vitamins, wow. but yeah. So is that being supplied by um, ample uh, windows in, yes, in yes. the spacecraft? Windows, windows and yeah. Okay, I imagine if you're closer to the sun, you probably have an easier time yeah. getting it. Yeah. Question over here. So the bacillus that Evie was talking about can survive in the vacuum. They form spores, these hardy spores that aren't actually technically living, I guess. They're sort of in stasis. Um, the power cell will need to be in some sort of enclosed environment. Okay, so in order for it to breathe, get the air that it yeah, needs. They could survive on Mars, though. If, so if we're talking about a Mars colony, they wow. the potentially they could live outside. Outside of a vacuum. Yeah. Wow, pretty yeah. impressive. Other questions out there? Yeah. Yeah. What what is unique about this bacteria? Has it been tried before? Are there other bacteria that could um, that were also tested? Um, this bacteria it's unique in that it forms these spores. So if it gets in if it gets in a stressful envir environment, it just kind of shuts down and preserves itself. Um, and so it's been flown before. So just because of its flight history, it makes it easier to to use. Um, and as far as the power cell goes, we chose that one because it can fix nitrogen and um, create these sugars. So it's, it's exactly what we want the bacillus to live off of, and the bacillus is hardy enough to, to live there as well. So wow, very cool. Okay, other questions? Did you have a question? Um, so the future on Mars, uh, does it involve a lot of eating of, um, do you think that, okay, here's a question. Do you think that we will uh, make these these proteins uh, from this bacteria like into shapes that we'll all recognize. What is the future? What do you think the future on Mars is going to look like? I'm sure this is all, of course, your own opinion. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's really hard to say. Everyone kind of has their own idea of, I guess, what that will look like. But obviously, I guess the goal is to be able to, you know, like build an entire colony, um, be able to do things like, you know, hopefully create that concrete with um, the Martian dust that Ryan mentioned and, you know, be able to build like houses and, you know, actual buildings and things and be mm. able to colonize or, I guess, terraform is the kind of official word for it. Um, Mars and, you know, eventually, though, I, with a lot of people talking about, you know, like one-way trips to Mars, uh -huh. which would be a one-way trip because we would have colonies there. And so it would be, you know, like moving to Mars. Wow. So here at the Academy, one of um, our mission here is to explore, explain, and to sustain life. And uh, we haven't actually really said that it was just here on Earth. That it's not something that we, uh, we necessarily discuss. And so um, taking that into account, exploring, explaining, sustaining, we certainly are exploring quite a bit. And thank you for explaining as well. Um, sustaining life, what kinds of lessons do you think we can learn from your work to help us here on Earth and then also for the future? What do we have to be careful of? Um, I think there are a few things, you know, one, obviously it's important to realize that like, you know, there's a lot of work being done and research being done to look into space exploration and colonization of other planets, but it still is like quite far off in the distance. So it's not something we can think about like, okay, you know, we can just ruin things here and then pack up and leave next year or even 10 years from now or a hundred years from now, you know, it's hard to say exactly when that's going to be able to happen. So just being mindful of that um, and, you know, taking care of the planet that we do have right now and being really mindful of that is really important. Absolutely. Did you have something you wanted to add to? Um, you may have heard of invasive species and um, so we have to be very careful on Earth uh, not to uh, you know, introduce species into habitats that they are not naturally in because that can cause uh, ecological uh, disasters and we have to be careful also when we are doing synthetic biology that we're not introducing new species or new um, problems into, uh, you know, uh, that would might disrupt uh, the environment. And I think that also is uh, related to, uh, you know, exploring um, other other planets and other worlds, um, just being mindful uh, 
and, and um, I think that's one of the big reasons that we're looking for astrobiology, because if there is life on other planets, um, we sh there's you know a, a great debate going on about whether we have the right to also be there mm -hmm. if there's already um, you know a, a living community. Right, absolutely. So um, do you have any recommendations or things that you like to do here on this planet that you think um, help us on this planet sustain our lives here before we have a chance to go off to other planets. Any recommendations, any things you like to do that you'd like to share with any of these guys? Any, any answer is fine. Ride your bike to work, anything like I that. I love riding my bike. <laughs> yeah. Re recycling, you could do that. Um, yeah. Turning the lights off when you leave a room. <laughs> Absolutely. <a> big one. <laughs> I know, I put you on the spot. Does anyone else have any other things that they want to make life better here on this planet before we make those jumps to other planets? Any things you like to do? How many of you ride a bike sometimes? Or maybe ride the bus? Yeah. Or maybe try to save electricity whenever you can? Composting? Yep. Recycling? So. We live on this planet, it's very well contained, but we've got this whole universe, so it's good to remember um, to, to be respectful of those, those other places out there and of our own home here, too. Wow, you guys are really cool. I like <laughs> you guys. All right, any other questions before we let them go? No? All right, how many of you are really excited now about space travel? All right. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for and, having um, us. And will you be around at the festival for people to come and talk to you a little bit uh, under the radar? Yeah. yeah, we'll be here. We have a, a booth set up in the, in the festival. Excellent. All right, can we give them a big round of applause? Thank you so much for coming. Um, really fascinating stuff you do. All of this stuff is brought to you by our brilliant science uh, extraterrestrial life festival. We have these every once in a while, but if you're curious about other things we do here, do find a program, stick around, check us out online. Um, we have a lot of science and we are exploring, explaining, and sustaining life all over the planet. So thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of your day.